again everyone welcome back i hope you are doing well today we are going to learn how to write an article look at the screen this really gives me goosebumps but not to worry we are coming up with some suggestions today on how to curb the spread of this virus in our article let's look at these pictures do these remind you of your daily practice now and for the past three months? We are reminded of these practices on a daily basis. Yep, you're absolutely right. There are some ways to prevent the spread of the virus. We will use them later when we write our article. When discussing about a topic, try to recall information that you remember from your reading or real-life experiences. This can help you when you write. Let us look at what these pictures tell us. For each picture, remember to think of the verbs related to them. Verbs like sanitize, wash, avoid and clean are essential in this topic. Here are the first two pictures. Scan body temperature at all entrances. Purpose? To ensure people who have fever do not enter the premise. Number two. Keep your social distance within one meter. Purpose? Staying one meter away can prevent infection through saliva and touch. Number three. Use hand sanitizers to clean your hands after touching surfaces. Purpose? Hand sanitizers contain chemicals that can kill bacteria and virus that might be on items and surfaces. Number four. Wash your hands regularly with soap. Purpose? Using soap to wash your hands is effective to make sure hands are clean and virus-free. Number five, avoid crowded places such as night markets or wet markets. Purpose, to avoid contracting the virus through body contact and saliva. Number six, do not travel, stay at home. Purpose, to prevent getting infected. Number seven, stay at home, do online learning or online shopping. Purpose, to avoid movement and to protect oneself from being infected by the virus. Background reading on a topic always helps you, especially when you are asked to give your own ideas in a directed writing question. This is the question that we are going to attempt today. In section A, paper 1, you might be asked to write an article. Here is a sample question. You have been instructed to stay at home and attend online classes during the recent Movement Control Order, MCO. One of the assignments given by your English teacher is to write an article for the school blog. Suggest measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19 virus in your local community. Using the brochure below, write your article and provide a suitable title. Give two more suggestions on how one can protect oneself from being infected by the virus. When writing your article, you must lay out your article correctly, use all the notes given, give your own ideas when needed. You will receive up to 15 marks for the format and content points and up to 20 marks for the quality of your writing. This is the layout that you should be thinking of. Look at the screen. First, you have the title. Give a suitable title for your article. It should center around the purpose of your article. 
you need a byline. The name of the writer. You can write your own name here. We also need to organize our points. I would strongly recommend that you have at least five paragraphs in total. Paragraph one should be your introduction. Paragraph two, have four content points here based on your brochure. Paragraph three, write five more content points and Paragraph 4, write the final four content points here. In paragraph 5, you can write your conclusion. Next, let us look at how you will get marks for your write-up. Format marks will be given for an appropriate title and another format mark for the name of the writer. Content marks will be awarded for all the points given in the question. But, you must have all the content points covered in your article. Let's recap the format of an article. Basically, this is how your title and byline should look like. Capitalization of some letters is important too when you write the title and your name. Pay attention to how the title and name are written. Let's shift our focus to the brochure that comes with the question. There are two things being mentioned here. The first is title, how does the virus spread? Next to it is a list of some ways to prevent the spread of this virus. We shall now look at how you can get marks for content. Usually, between 12 to 13 marks are allocated for content in directed writing. Look at this brochure. I have identified the content points and number them. In the question, you are required to add two more ideas so that they can make up contents 12 and 13. 20 marks are allocated for language. Hopefully, you can get high marks for language. Nothing is impossible. Boys and girls, there are four aspects of language we need to pay attention to. Number one, grammar. Number two, the tone. Number three, choice of vocabulary. Number four, spelling and punctuation. When writing an article, we are writing something factual, and in this case, a current event. Hence, hmm, yes, we are thinking of the simple present tense. Next, we are going to look at the tone used in the article. Since you are writing it for your school blog, you are writing your article using a formal tone. It means that words should be written in full. No contractions or abbreviations. No active voice like slangs or dialogue. The sentences should suggest the seriousness of the matter. No flowery language is required. Your word choice is important. All these words are related to the topic in the question. You may need them for your article. Here are some examples. Let me give you a minute to copy them. You must use correct spelling and punctuation. 
the capitalization of letters in proper nouns like names of people and places and not forgetting personal pronoun I which is always written in capital letter. No matter where it is placed in a sentence, punctuation markers like comma, full stops, question mark, apostrophes must be used accurately and effectively. We often get stuck at the first paragraph. Hmm, think of an upside down triangle. Start with something big and narrow it down to something very specific. Your introduction should avoid making general or sweeping statements. Use recent examples. Inform the reader the purpose of the article. Here are some sentences that you can use to kickstart your article. They are all sentences about what is happening around the world or in our country. I am going to choose one just to show you how it can be used. Here is how the introduction can be developed. Take a minute to read. Think about the upside down triangle which I mentioned earlier and look at the underlying sentence. This sentence is very important because it informs the reader what the rest of the article is about. I have written that as the controlling idea. When I read your first paragraph, I should be able to tell what the rest of the article is about. That is the purpose of the controlling idea in the first paragraph. Are you ready for the second paragraph? Here are the points that we are going to use from the brochure. Look at the yellow circles. We can organize our points this way because Contents 1 to 4 are about the ways the virus can spread. Would you like to read with me? Coronaviruses are known to spread through several ways. The first is through respiratory secretions like coughing and sneezing. At this point, it is very difficult to tell if someone is a carrier of the virus. Sometimes, a person may not look ill, but he or she can be a positive COVID-19 patient. Another way is via direct physical contact with the infected person. When an infected person touches your hand, or any part of your body, the virus can be passed on to you too. Touching the surfaces or coming in contact with objects which are contaminated by the virus will also cause the virus to spread. It is crucial to know how the virus spreads before we can learn the ways to protect ourselves from becoming the victims of this invisible threat. This is how you start paragraph 2. Look at the underlying sentence. This is the first content point. Hence, you must include this in your article. The second sentence is also taken from the brochure, which is content number 2. Yes, all content points must be written in sentences. To go to the point in your article, 
you may use words like another or the next way. This will signal to the reader that you are writing about a new point. We do not use sequence connectors like firstly and secondly here because it is not a process or a procedure. This sentence starts with a gerund. It's okay if you do not know what a gerund is. You can find out about it later. Notice that this writer uses a different way to start every sentence. You should do this too. Beginning a sentence differently each time will leave a feel-good feeling when your reader reads your work. We will continue with paragraph 3. Here are five more content points to write in this paragraph. This is paragraph 3. Let us read on your own. Can you identify the content points in this paragraph? These are the contents covered in paragraph 3. The sentences have used the points listed from the brochure. That is easy, right? We are now left with four more content points to write. Not much left to write now, students. These are the content points for paragraph 4. Let's go through them. C10. Avoid close contact with someone who is sick. C11. Clean and disinfect frequently touch objects or surfaces. C12. Avoid three C's Crowded places, confined spaces and close conversation C13 Wear face masks and gloves when in public places Another way to protect ourselves from being a victim of COVID-19 is to avoid being near anyone who is sick do not have close contact with any friend or relative whom you know are having fever or runny nose. You never know if the person has contracted the virus. This is another measure we should follow. The next step is to constantly clean and disinfect surrounding surfaces at home. You never know who has touched the surfaces or if there is bacteria or virus that is present there. The most famous advice to avoid the three C's. Crowded places, confined spaces and closed conversations. These reminders are easy to remember and all of us must adhere to the guidelines given to us. All supermarkets and premises have strict guidelines to patrons who go there where everyone should always wear their face masks and if possible wear gloves. These items can protect people from being infected by the deadly virus. We have now 
reach the last paragraph. Wow, isn't that awesome? In the last paragraph, you can add Prevention is better than cure. Urge everyone to play their part. And finally, stay home and stay safe message. Here are some tips when writing the last paragraph. The first is KISS. K-I-S-S. Keep it short and simple. I like that. No content points and examples are needed here. Your message to the reader should be clear. As responsible citizens, we have a duty to our country to protect the spread of the virus. Besides staying at home and playing our roles as responsible Malaysian citizens, we must appreciate the efforts and the sacrifices of our frontliners such as the doctors, nurses, armed forces and many others in our war against this deadly virus. The saying, prevention is better than cure, can never be more true in our present situation. Do not take this matter lightly and follow all the measures to protect ourselves and the people we love from COVID-19. Stay at home and stay safe. I have a few reminders for today's lesson. The first one, choose a suitable title. Number two, write your full name below the title. Number three, Organize your points according to the paragraphs. Number four, develop the paragraphs by stating your points and give elaborations. Vary your sentences and use related words to the topic. Give examples to make your points clearer.
boys and girls, we've come to the end of today's lesson. Work hard and don't give up. Remember now, everyone can write. See you soon. <laughs>